Hello everybody, welcome back. Today's tutorial I'm going to be putting a character into a photograph. Now before we get started on this, uh, a couple things I want to say is why you'd want to do this? Um, for the most part I haven't really been doing backgrounds on anything, I haven't been showing how to do them, I haven't been showing how to design them or anything like that. Um, and I think this would be a good starting point to begin all those things. Um, what you can do is, is if you're really bad at making backgrounds, I and mean, everyone ha is bad at doing something or another, if you're bad at doing them and you really don't trust yourself to do them, um, one thing you can do while you're working on character design is to fit your characters into a background that's already existing. Like, you can go out and take a few photos, like go around your town, take some photos of like park benches and uh, trees and just like places where people would be, and fill in those spaces with your characters. Um, what I end up using these things for is I take them kind of like a challenge to see like what I can do to put a character in these spots and kind of put them into the real world where obviously none of these characters really exist. Um, but what else they're also good for is uh, I use them for wallpapers, for like desktop wallpapers and backgrounds. So I actually have a folder of a few of these that I've done and it just cycles through them every few hours. Um, since I don't quite like having just an image, I like having something a bit more personal to it, since like, I'm going to be seeing the wallpapers a lot. So I always like find photographs and I have uh, people take photographs for me that I end up putting stuff into. Um, recently I've actually been doing art trades with a friend of mine, he goes by Black Silk on uh, for Fitting and things like that. Um, he been taking photographs for me and you know I use them for my things and I just give him some artwork in return because he takes better photographs than I can. So uh, if you're really bad at taking photographs that's always an option is to find someone who may even have just a collection already and you can just pick a few out of and like I don't say thank you or give some uh, art in return or something like that. Um, so I've been doing these trades for a while in fact I have another one I did here of a train station or a train uh, going down some tracks. And so I threw an uh, hobo Zay on it, sitting down. Now, uh, you have to crop these images to be the proper ratio of your monitor. Uh, the aspect ratio of my monitor is uh, 9 by 16. So for every 9 pixels up, it's 16 pixels wide. So I actually had to crop this image a little bit so that it fit my monitor. So it doesn't get like terrible black bars or something that I didn't aim for. But it really didn't change it all that much. But notice that uh, I made the character that I added in here the same shade and tone as the rest, so I didn't make it any bright random colors when the thing is black and white, that's a perfect example. Uh, on the other image, I'm not gonna make it like a rave colors and really bright neon -y things if someone's up in a tree, that, that just doesn't make any sense. So keep that in mind when you're doing these. Also, you might wanna go the extra mile just a little bit to help put your character into the area. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, it's all too easy to put your character on the drawing or onto the photograph or on the things that you that you like went out and took a photo of and that just doesn't work because uh if there's a park bench like take the park bench for example if they're sitting on the park bench they're in the image they have to be part of it so you have to do little steps to kind of make them integrated into what you're doing and not just you know like a stamp you put on top of the image. So how do you avoid that? The easiest way is by shading properly. So uh, for this example, since I have this thing pulled up, I'll just use this. Uh, for the shading here, I have reflective shading. So these surfaces right here are assumed to, to be metallic. So light will hit them and it will bounce up again. Not that dramatically, but still, it'll they'll bounce up. So there'll be a light coming back along the backs of it along, as well as the front. So you have lighter areas behind, lighter areas in front, and this darker shade in the middle. So that helps add to this little effect. Another good way is drop shadows. If you're not very good with reflected shadows or anything like that, just focus on where this person's shadow would be in the real world. So this shadow back here is completely added in. Like it has one hard edge and then it just fades off into nothingness. And I put this shadow around here on this spot, down here, on here, along here, 
Like, you probably wouldn't even notice that. I'm just pointing these things out and now you're kind of seeing them. Those shadows didn't exist because this character wasn't here in the real world. So I had to add those things in, but adding those things in puts the character into the spot. Uh, the last most important thing on how to do this properly is perspective. And this is something that is just pain. It's always going to be a pain and it's never not going to be a pain. Perspective is so important, but it's just so tedious sometimes. So you basically have to assume where the photograph is being taken from. Now we're going to flip over to the other thing since this kind of serves as purposes. So this is a photograph of a tree with the sun coming through the trees, right? So we have to assume where the camera is when this photograph was taken. So the person was probably standing on the ground because the sun is up, up above and it's not like it's not um, colored as though it's turning to a sunset so it can't be a straightforward photograph so since the character since everything is going to be above we have to take that into consideration when we're designing this so say we have a character sitting here if we just like you know put the character sitting here yada 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 it's like oh it's nice they're sitting here and then it's like oh it's like oh their legs are down here and they're like holding on to the thing they're leaning forward they're like gonna fall off this thing and then they're gonna they die or something. Since they're gonna be a, since they're sitting here, they have to be oh, oh, oh. since they're sitting here, they have to be above. They're like they're sitting on this thing so that it's uh, so that it's carrying their weight. They're not looking down at you by rolling over the edge. So what would end up happening is that you have this foreshortening that goes on. Like you wouldn't really see the majority of their uh, the majority of their head because their torso is gonna be covering it. They have their arms down here like this and you know they're holding on to it or something but in reality what you'd see is actually more so akin to this if they're just sitting there looking forward if they're looking at you then obviously they're going to be you know leaning over and they're going to be like hey how's it going it's like uh, i'm going to wave it's like hello person down there taking a photograph but you have to take those into consideration because if the character is just like as you would normally draw them straight forward but the perspective doesn't allow that you messed up you severely messed up and it's not gonna fit in the thing and you have that same issue again wherein the character is sitting on the photograph not in it so let's get started here now what we're gonna do is I have a sketchy pen here that we're gonna be doing most of this with oh, that's a little bit too light let's just move over to this thing since That'll probably be a little bit better. Da, 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 da. There you go. So we're gonna have we're just for the sakes of uh, this in starting area, we're gonna draw on someone sitting on this branch here. Okay. Hold on, I'll break. Now nah, we're gonna use the other thing. So all this stuff up here, we're gonna have to take consideration, but later we're gonna erase anything that's behind it just so that it helps push this character in more into the photograph. But uh, let's start off. Throw in like a spine, character's head. Uh, we, or we are going to have them kind of leaning over and looking downwards just because that would make a little bit more sense. Uh, like, you know, why is someone taking a photograph? Let's make this a bit more personal and a part of it and give a little bit of story. Like, you know, someone waving and saying hello to their friend taking their photograph up in the tree. Maybe they didn't believe that they could climb it because they're really clumsy or something. So it's like they needed to take photo proof of it. So... We have their spine put in here. This is going to be their hips. Um, their legs are going to be kind of off the edge, sticking outwards quite a bit, and then actually straight down. And they're going to be quite short because um, because they're going to be more facing towards us. And then you know, bottom of their feet, and then they're holding on to the thing because maybe they're really really nervous that they're up here still, and then their tail down below. So there you go, you have like a basic, basic sketch of it. Now this gives some really unique, like, excuses. You can draw their face from straight forward. You don't have to bother with perspective or some weird stuff or like the bottom of the chin or anything because they're looking at the person taking the photo. Um, they're leaning over so you have less of an extreme curvature to the chest and the shoulders as they go around. And the legs are actually gonna hide a good part of the rest of this body. So long as you actually try on the legs, it'll actually turn out quite well. 
So you have shorts maybe. I'm going to darken this a little bit so you can see this better. But you have like these, this person has some shorts on. Their like feet are going to be hiding a good majority of this actually. And they're not going to be bending their feet in some crazy way. So the feet will actually be flat compared to you. And then you kind of work your way up. The torso might be a little bit like squished just because, or the stomach might be a little bit squished because they're leaning over. Then you have kind of the shoulders put in at a rather natural place actually, all things considered. They're going to be very rigid and holding on because they're really terrified. And then kind of the face is going to be very, very straightforward. So I just kind of sketched this in. But you can kind of see where that can start to fit in. Now, when you get to the later stages and you say, like, need to shade it, this super, super bright sun is going to be making this whole area over here yellow. Or maybe not strictly yellow, but it's going to be a lot brighter facing the sun. So we can use that to our advantage here as we're putting this character into the actual image, into this real world that actually exists. Because if we make them really, really bright, naturally bright, not brighter than over here or brighter than over here, because why is this so dull, but they're just like neon and radiating light. That doesn't make any sense. So you have to fit them into where they're at. And same goes for the shadow. There's no spot here that's super, super dark. I mean, this is the darkest area, but that's like hidden by all of these tree, by all these leaves and like maybe there's some other branches that going up through here. So this area is not hit, being hit by light hardly at all. But you have that opportunity to use, you know, a rather dark shade along the other side and along here as well. You don't have to darken it by much because this area isn't that dark. So that's like the really, really rough thing. And then you can go in and you can make your line works really, really nice. Now, when it comes to line work for this, honestly, I'd recommend a painterly style because the world doesn't have lines to it. If you can manage to do this very, very painterly and very nice and without edges, then it would look a lot more natural, a lot more fitting. But I'm not much of a painter. I do like semi-painting sometimes and occasionally I do digital paintings, but I don't quite like doing them for like just for the sakes of having a wallpaper. So for this one, I'm going to be doing uh, thin lines with a little bit of a accent to them just so that the lines have more of a purpose to be there. So it looks a little, looks a little bit better. And I'm actually going to be doing a painterly overlay shading layer. Like the shading is going to be very painterly, but it's going to be flat colors for the most part. Now, I say this as though I'm nearly done. That's because I nearly am. So here you have the line work that you can kind of barely see. You have like the, ske the first sketch. Then you have the, sec like the second sketch that I did. I will lower this. You have the second sketch I did. And then you have the clothing. So these together, you have this character that I've been putting in here. See, I worked ahead of here. Now you can see where I had a couple of mess ups that I decided to alter things. So this foot's actually a different color. So, you know, perfect example of nobody's perfect. This hand's a different color as before it was pointed like it was facing this way, where it needs to be facing towards us, the camera. And there's a couple of small perspective issues with this, I understand. Um, I But I did a lot of effort into fixing the efforts I made already, and plus it's a tutorial. Let's have a little bit of fun with this. Make it a little bit easier to see and not go perfectionist with perspective and things like that. So I just did little things, like you can see the bottom of the foot here, you can see the inside of the hand, you can see more the underside of the arm and the underside of the legs a little bit better, underside of the tail, things like that are, are what you can do. I put the foot a little bit behind this, but you have this character bouncing on this, on this branch. Now, I understand this branch is probably really, really small, all things considered, but I'm kind of editing this world already, so I'm drawing this making the assumption that these are really, really large branches, and that these leaves are huge. Maybe this, maybe they're exploring the jungle or something, I don't know. We'll make up the explanation later. But for now, I just kind of like this idea of the character kind of wobbling and walking across here. And remember, I always, oh, not that one. I always use my first thing, so still gonna use this program, everybody. But I always, you'll know, make my first sketches. That's, I follow my own rules. And to make this easier to see, I put this photograph 
above a white layer and I just have it at a transparency so that it's I can make it much more white so I can see this thing better so we have we have our sketch we have this thing down we have this thing done I showed you how to do the sketches yourself so that you know kind of what to do and if nothing else if you are super bad at perspective and you really don't think you can do it you can do two things there you can either go out and take photos of things that are at standing level assuming that the thing would just be looking straight at you and completely natural and boring or you can draw the character that way in your images and then edit small things kind of fix it uh that's much more akin to what i did here i kind of drew the character in and then i was like that makes no sense that makes no sense that makes no sense that makes no sense and i went through and edited them much like the leg here it's just hold on did i put that into the thing yes i did Get that out of there? Yes, I did. Okay, sorry about that. I was really paranoid. I just, like, altered my own image. Or, no, not my image. Yeah, altered the base image. But you can see right here, that's not, like, these lines right here don't make any sense. That's because this leg used to be a little bit longer, but I shortened it just slightly to help match the head. I did very little to make that fit in perspective, but I do have her looking down, keeping an eye on the, uh, on the branch so that she doesn't move around a lot so that's kind of my excuse for that so let's actually get started on the line work a little bit here so you know what i'm talking about now black lines because i can so let's focus on the head now i'm going to be doing very very thin lines because the world doesn't exist in lines so that's the wrong layer i just love having right layers for everything so if i do very very thin lines i can kind of ignore them almost in the end bits so throwing these things in putting in her hair do, 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 do. come on put this eye in she's looking down so I have to put in the pupil as well and this is supposed to be a very very rough kind of set of line works just so that this I can get this part in and I'm going to be going through and refining these things later. Um, let me get this ear in and I'll show you what I mean by refining. And then I can throw some the time lapse so I'm not wasting a whole bunch of your time. So, I mean, this is this is line work. This isn't uh, anything amazing or crazy or extravagant that I haven't talked about before. And I completely messed up the inside of this. Listen to your sketch, but don't listen to it too closely. So, have this ear in. Now, what do I mean by kind of the refined line work? So, this thing is really thin. And this thing is really boring. So what you can do to make it a bit more interesting, and of course we're zoomed way, 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 way in, we do to make things a little bit more interesting, just so that the line work feels like it has a bit more reason, is all these connecting points, you can kind of slope them into each other. It's not much. It really isn't much, but it doesn't need to be much. Since these line works, this line just really doesn't exist anyway. So, I mean, if we do too much craziness here and make this super extravagant and, you know, like hyper stylized then what's the point in taking a photo anyway is just make your own background up you could make something up that's hyper stylized and it would make sense so i'm just gonna make all these little connecting lines a bit a bit better at flowing into each other um this eye is behind so it really isn't affected much by this sloping it's just kind of behind it um these little extravagant line things really only work for things that are already on the same plane since you know these are bangs of hair that are right next to each other so it makes sense that they're being affected by this and they're like affecting each other and how the line works so that looks a little bit better just being lines since i'm gonna have to like how this looks and since i'm whoop, since i'm not willing to do this super detailed uh, painterly style so that it fits the world better so that's what i'm gonna be doing for all these lines I already have tutorials on hands I have tutorials on shirts and clothing like the rest of this there's really no need to make this like a multi-part tutorial series so I'm gonna kick this in the time-lapse until we get past the coloring stage because there's no reason to talk about coloring because it's gonna be flat colors for this image remember when we get to the shading I'll talk a little bit more on how you can fit this world this, fit this character into the world better using that see you real soon Alright, welcome back. So, 
I put in the flat colors, I did the line work, I did all that stuff that I talked about doing. Um, and here's where we're at now. So, again, always use references. I have, I have the references character, so might as well make use of it. And just so you know how this looks so far, you know what, that's not half bad for just the flat colors in there. I would be okay with using that for my wallpaper, not quite okay with uh, showing this off, like uploading it or anything as that, but by my standards, that's fine. But we're going to take it a step further. We are going to keep on going with this because, darn it, this is a drawing tutorial and I'm going to make use of everything. So, this next step is going to look very familiar to those of you who have been watching the, this series for a while. We are going to be using a very similar technique that I did in the fire tutorial, wherein we're going to have a layer above it, transparent layer, and we're going to kind of paint into this. Now, uh, this program has a lot of really, really cool features, um, some of which are more useful than others, but yeah, that's true of everything. For this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this totally gray. Ah, stone viola. Do, 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 do. And we are going to add all of our color into this layer. Now, this program has really, really good painting tools. When I say really good painting tools, I mean painting tools that make me want to actually paint. And that's, that's a lot for me. So, how we're going to go about this is, on this gray, gray, gray layer, we are going to put in the yellow of the, of the sun. You might be thinking to yourself, well, that's really bright yellow, isn't it? Well, honestly, yes, it is. I should probably be muting this a little bit, but admittedly, uh, I still think it'll look really nice. And so long as we only have the yellow on the sides that are very, very directly in front of this, then it'll be fine. Now, this hand is kind of, you have to imagine everything is coming from here. So this hand, while it's going to be facing us, is still going to have quite a bit of light on the other side of it. So as we go around, we're just going to be adding in this color. This thumb is on the is towards us, so it's not actually going to have this ring of light around it. Now, the thing with the yellow, this character, uh, she's a shark. And sharks don't really have fur. They have, you know, kind of slick skin. So she's actually going to be really quite reflective in terms of this. She's going to be picking up a lot more of the brightness than you would see on other things. So... She's going to look a little bit unnaturally light, and I'm going to go through later and add in very, very bright, bright highlights along the edges just to help uh, show that she is you know, reflective. She's not, she's very scaly. I don't know. I think it's not definitely not scales that sharks have. I know that. I don't know what the term is. It's like, I don't think it's, you can quite say skin, can you? That seems wrong to me. Anyways. We're going to have a little bit of reflective shading along the bottom of this. I talked about that term before, which is the shading that comes off of other objects. Uh, we're going to keep in mind the shape of the body underneath here. So we have to add in this light here. And this is going to be very, very rough at first. That's just how it's going to be put in. Uh, we're going to have to go through and refine this. But because we're doing this on a layer above it, and the way that this brush works is it needs to be working on a layer with color already, so that's why I made this gray. Uh, other tools I have, I could have done this without that gray layer, but I feel so that kind of a dusty look to it will help add into this like natural area that she's in, because she's not going to be perfectly clean, let's be honest here. Uh, but you can use your own tools, you can use your own ways of doing this, and I'm just going to be going around and adding in this yellow kind of highlight to everything as this will probably end up being one of the brightest levels. Uh, I noticed that on things really close to here, like this along here, this area, these have that really, really thick, thick, like bright line to them. So we're going to be using that, but only for things that are really close because looking at this here, it's obvious that this light is coming in for, into this direction, but this sketch is over here. So we're going to keep, we're going to kind of imagine that the light is coming in from this way as well, but it's going to very quickly drop off and we're not going to have a whole lot of these brightnesses over here. In fact, this hand, I probably shouldn't be putting anything onto, but I'm still going to put a little bit just to give the form and definition to it. 
but in reality it's it shouldn't really be having any of this brightness uh, this leg this leg's not gonna have anything on it this leg is but it's gonna be kind of running up mid-range of this fall off and as an additive effect to this like fall off of the light effect wherein it's not um, it's not that strong going out it's also going to fade away faster or fade not fade faster it's going to fade away slower so for this it's not going to be that bright along the edge it's also going to take longer for it to disappear into nothingness where in this area it's going to be very very dramatic that'll help make this area up here feel it's a lot closer because it has that dramatic change much like this here it's this very quick and sudden change and sure like you can see the light kind of going past it and hitting this other area on the leaf but it still has that edge to it and we're going to kind of be mimicking that in this regard so we have this just the basic basic of the uh yellow down so let's find a shade to use since the yellow is the sun bright white yellow light whatever what are we going to use for the darkness well we're surrounded by trees so maybe we should use a brown color and we can't quite use a purple because viola is purple which would be the natural counter to the yellow so let's grab a brown now we can make a brown by doing this or we can find one out over here which is surprisingly uses a lot of blue funny how that works huh so we have our color let's just test both these out real quick so this shade versus this shade hmm I think we're going to mix these a little bit, just so that we have something kind of in between. Because I don't quite want to use a blue, because I feel as though that would look a little bit strange in this image. But I don't quite want to use the brown either, because that just doesn't look natural. So, what we're going to go about is we're going to mix these. So, that's the brown. Put this on top. Grab the color. Oh, I have to... Burp. Do, 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 do. You know what? Close enough. So, what this basically means is, if I get rid of all that, what this basically means is, this shade should be a little bit natural, more natural, for this uh, shading, as compared to the rest. It's a bit of a yellow shade, because it did pick up some of the green in the background, but I'm okay with that, as this shade will still look more natural and fit in a lot better than what I had before. So, for this area, it's going to be a very, very dramatic... No, it's not going to be very dramatic. This is the fall-off area. So, this is actually going to be the area where it's kind of this really, really soft. Where it's it's in shadow, yes, but it's not, in, it's not super in shadow. It's not, like, suddenly in shadow. It's just, it's an area where there's already shadow. You knew it was going to be in shadow, so we don't have to have it really dramatic and really sudden. So... There you go, you have some. Now this is gonna be really rough, so don't quite take this image uh, as is. You're gonna be seeing the final product in, at the end of the video, and that will probably be a lot more, you know, well-rounded out than this. But the more time that you spend on this shading step, the better. And the reason for that is, is that it makes it more believable. It makes this person in this world. As I was talking about at the beginning of this video, you don't want them sitting on it, you want them sitting in it. So, this area in between of the arm is going to get this as well, but it's going to come up and not quite reach the bright. It's going to get right up to the edge of it. Ta -da. Now, before I move on to incorporating the character into the world, let's actually grab this shade over here. This is actually a really, really bright white slash orange slash yellow, but we're going to be incorporating this in. Now, we're not going to be incorporating it in with uh, that normal tool. We're going to be incorporating it in with the pen, but with a very low opacity. So that's or not that low of an opacity. But the goal here is to put it along the edge. Well, that doesn't look right at all, not does it? Here's what we're going to do instead. We're going to make this max opacity. We're going to put it in. That's right. We are on this layer, which is opaque or transparent. I always get opaque and transparent confused. Does anyone else do that? Anyways, we have to put this highlight bar on the edge. Well, it doesn't quite look right, does it? You're right. Because it has this black outline to it. So how are we going to fix this? Well, here's how. We get rid of this line that we just put in. We move this above the line work. Now, it's 
a clipping mask so we'll only draw on the, on the area below, we make the outline this brighter shade. Magic, isn't it? So if we do this for the dramatic, dramatic changing areas, this would make it much better since this world doesn't have lines. It, it, just keep that in mind as you're working on this. So if we can turn the lines into a part of the character, into a part of the shading itself, that makes this effect a lot stronger. So now we have this really, really bright, 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 bright edge to it. And all we really had to do was replace the thing that shouldn't have been there in the first place. There you go, that, that looks so much better than it could have otherwise. We can add this up here. We can put it uh, like right up to the edge of the clothing. The clothing won't be super reflective, only really the hair and the skin of the shark character will be. But as long as we don't go overboard with this, we'll, we'll be golden. This thing will look so much better and so much like in this world just because we kind of got rid of this thing that shouldn't have been there. Oh, look at that. That looks great, doesn't it? Now we have to keep in mind that this fade off, this drop off effect that we're going for. My sketch was still underneath that. Yeah. So we can't quite uh, put this everywhere because that would kind of ruin the effect that we're going for so much here. But just that little bit will help add, the, put, add this character into the world behind. Now before I cut this in one more time lapse where I kind of finish off the shading, since I showed you what's important, uh, the clothing is just as simple as the rest, keep a good focus on the wrinkles so that those don't look bad. Um, but before we continue with this, I'm going to, real quick, uh, just add in some stuff here onto the branches. Now, right now, the character just ends before the branch. And that just doesn't make much sense. It, like, for one, this image is a little bit blurry when you get really, really close up. No one's going to be seeing it this close. Don't worry, it's fine. But it has a little bit of that fuzz to it. So the way we can actually go about uh, rounding that out more so that it fits the character more uh, what we can do is we can actually smudge the edge of what's touching the thing. So it's like, oh, you know, this is kind of here, it kind of fades out. So that will look a little bit more natural. Now notice here, this branch is in front, but I didn't make the character form around it. But it's actually there. Like, that's how it ends. So this causes a couple of weird issues, wherein it looks like this branch should be in front of the leg, but the leg is where it naturally should be. Unfortunately, there's not much we can do to fix that. It's gonna look like it's like poorly photoshopped in or something like that. But the only way we can go about fixing this issue is to actually fake this limb, which is a very strange way to put it, but you can fake the limb so that it's up here and you can kind of like draw that in and if you're really really good you can render it in so it looks like it's uh it's part this branch is much taller than it normally is or we can just leave it as is and hope that people understand that the leg is or that the uh foot is naturally where it should be because like we can't change where the foot is because that it would just look like it's standing on nothing and that we ruin the effect all over again so the only real way to fix this right now is either be an amazing digital painter and and move the limb basically or to move the character and if we move the character now we'd have to change a bit of the shading we'd have to change the position of the feet and how stuff is set up that was unfortunately just something that died due to poor planning so we're gonna have to leave that one as is sad face so i'm gonna kick this in time lapse and finish off the last of the shading I'll see you at the end, and I'll just kind of give a roundup. See you real soon. I can't believe I almost missed this. So, I literally was about to talk about this before I started the, uh, the speed section of this. Then, right after I started, realized I forgot to mention it. So, basically, you want to incorporate your character's shadow into the world around them. Now, this one is going to be really simple. She's walking on a tree branch. The tree branch is going to be darker below her. We have to keep in mind where 
the tree is in relation to her and the sun, so we can do other branches nearby. That's going to be the most difficult part. If we go back to this train drawing I have, it's literally just going to be like this, oh, wrong thing. It's going to be this area back here. Like, the sun is over here, we can just infer that from where the lighting is on everything else. And like down here, we can see that the, sh the shadows are going in that direction. So obviously the sun is coming from this way. If the sun is coming from this way, then we can just like draw lines and be like, okay, hat goes there. Neck goes below that. Shoulders go below that. Where do the legs go? Okay, the legs are down here. So we're gonna have to shade that area. Okay, so we have to put the drop shadows from the character into the world around them. So how do we do that here? Well, 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 well. Light is here. It goes this way, right? Well, the light is here. So actually more goes out like this word though. In this image, it actually looks like it goes this way. Look, whatever. We're not going to work on the details with this. We're light, light this way. Light, light here. Character here. Light goes this way. Um. So, what happens to this branch? So the branch, where her feet are going to be, is going to be very direct. In fact, we're going to do this in black just so it's a bit easier. So where her feet are going to be is going to be much darker. So here we go, right here. I'm going to kind of sketch in this stuff just and then um, like fade it in after a moment. Okay, her tail wrapping around like this. It's not touching this branch, so it's not going to be directly on top of it. It'll be over to the side away from the light source just slightly and only the area directly like below it or really, really close to the object is going to be the darkest. The rest will kind of fade backwards. So if we have this, it's fading outwards. Down here, it's really, really dark. Makes sense? Good. Now, this leg that's up. So if the light is coming out this way, it's gonna hit this leg, and it's gonna kind of disappear over here. Now, we can kind of pick a spot where we want this shadow to be, but I don't quite know where it would be. So what we're going to do is we're going to assume that this thing is really far behind them, as that would make sense. This character is very forward to us, the sun is very far away from us in this composition, or at least that solar spot through the trees is very far away from us. We can tell that the sun is really far away, like, that's kind of a given. So because we can tell that that solar spot is, very, is rather far away, we can say that this can actually be really close to us. So maybe on here, or on this branch somewhere, but we also have to keep in mind of how far away it'd be. So it actually probably would just be affected over here. So this area would be very, very lightly affected, but still a little bit. So if we kind of throw this in here. Now, what about the whole character? We have the feet put in and the things that are directly touching the ground. Well, she's not touching this branch over here, so there'd be no shadow there. She's not touching anything over here. So the rest of the body is doing a drop shadow somewhere. And if we have these two spots for where the feet are, this area in between would probably be a little bit darker. Now, her body is really far away from this as compared to where her feet are, so it actually wouldn't be affecting this area a whole lot. But we have to get this illusion that the character exists in this space, so we're going to throw in something. So just really, really lightly, down here as well, just kind of throwing this in. A little bit darker here, as this area would be a little bit more direct. There. Now, we didn't really add in a whole lot in that spot, did we? Now, we have our shading. We have the sketch of our shading. So we're going to go in with, you guessed it, a painterly tool, because this needs to be really painterly. And we're just going to kind of throw on top. So if we reduce the size of this so we can just barely see it, and so we can kind of see where we need to put these things, we can throw this in and it's just a case of that slow gradient shading is not is not going to be very direct it's not going to be like a sudden change in fact most of the time you're not going to notice it if you can barely notice that you really made a difference because that just that tone difference that you made is so slight you've done right you done did right so this area is not going to be that much darker this area is going to be just a little bit darker, and then this area is going to be that lighter shade again. And this area is going to be a really, really light shade as well. 
So if we get rid of that other one. Now that's still really quite rough. So we're going to have to go through and kind of clean this up just a little bit. Not even actually clean it, but actually if anything, we're going to be dirtying it more. We don't want this to be very direct. Because if we say, hey, look, there's a shadow here, then yeah, people are going to say, yep, there's de you definitely put a shadow there. We don't want people to notice the shadow that we added in. Much like we don't notice the shadows that are on the tree, we just know that there's a shadow there. It's a natural spot. It's a natural place. It's a natural depth to it. So if we really don't force it, it'll be better. There. So we kind of darken this area just a little bit. You notice how we can, you can barely tell that I did brush strokes there. It's so important that you can barely tell you do brush strokes. So we have those shadows in. Awesome. This one is still a little bit too dramatic for my taste. So I'm going to loosen this up just a little bit. There. Whoops. That's actually the 100% size of this. I make my wallpapers really, really large. So basically I for no reason in particular other than it'll just look nicer to me but there you go image is done we put this character into a spot where she didn't exist before other things you can do here and this is important to note you can do a lot of other things you can actually affect the image in another way so that it the image fits the character better if you want to go extreme with this you can outline everything like, you could literally go through all the tree branches, and where's my cursor? There's my cursor. But you can go through, like, every single little tree, I'm going to do some red so you can see it easier. You can go through, like, all the outlines, and you can outline all this area that you have, obviously in black. You can, like, outline the leaves, or, like, do a vague outline of the leaves, or, like, just go around here and, like, outline all this area. But if you put an outline to the stuff in the world, then it makes sense that your character is outlined because you know the world is outlined so why why can't why can't she be so that's one way you can go about it you can uh, do that to help match the character you can also do an effect to the background since i have this kind of almost sepia color difference to my character i could go through and i could actually do this painterly style to the to the background i can get this again using the wrong color entirely but i can kind of painterly added it add in like a more dramatic change to everything and then if i do the same effects that i did here it'll fit better and it'll be oh yeah you know the character's shaded that way well the trees are shaded that way and the leaves are shaded that way so it makes sense that she's shaded that way so i can go through and i can basically do all of this and if you want to do this like in a faster way where it's not nearly as much effort you can do it very you can make it very blatant around the character and then kind of fade off and be like oh yeah you know it, it totally continues down here guys yeah so you don't have to do quite as much for it but you can still put the character into the world directly around them you can also come up with some clever little reason why the character's there maybe they're ripping through a hole in space time or something and it just makes no damn sense but you know to each their own you can kind of make up what you want but here's the image it's done I'm going to actually have this in my uh, normal rotation for my wallpapers now because I really quite like it. And I like the new Viola design that I had made recently. So, with that, that is another drawing tutorial done for the week. Thank you all for watching. If you have suggestions for future drawing tutorials, let me know down below. I'd love to see them and suggestions always go much higher in the priority list on next tutorials. So, it's very likely you'll see it very soon if you make a suggestion. Uh, if you liked what you saw here today and if you used what you saw here today, then let me know. Like, show me what you made. I love seeing what people make with their stuff. With that, I will be ending off this video. Thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.